Grade Seven's Natural Sciences Time. I'm Helen, and the focus of our lesson today is kinetic energy. Now, in our last lesson, if you remember, we explored potential energy in great detail. We looked at gravitational potential energy, we looked at chemical potential energy, elastic potential energy, and we could recognize potential energy in that it is stored energy. It is energy that has the ability to do work, but it's not doing work yet. Whereas kinetic energy is the energy that the system has because an object or the whole system is having an energy transfer and something is moving. So here's our energy transfer from the potential energy of the spring to the kinetic energy of the box moving. Let's explore kinetic energy today in a lot more detail. So our first thing is, can we identify from a picture or from a system which of these objects are displaying kinetic energy? So if we have a little boy and he is standing still on the edge of the swimming pool, has he or is he displaying kinetic energy in terms of his movement? And we would say no, he is not displaying kinetic energy. But when he is swimming, yes, he is moving his arms, he's kicking his legs up and down, he is moving through the water. What is giving him that kinetic energy? Well, it would have been the chemical potential energy from the food that he ate. I think you can identify this one pretty easily, the cheetah running. Would we say that that is a display of kinetic energy? Yes, we're seeing lots of kinetic energy there. Let's move on to this picture of the car. Now, as it stands as a picture and it's, it's empty, there's nobody sitting in the car, would we say that it is displaying at this time kinetic energy? No, but there are ways that we could change the system in order to see potential energy in the object. For example, we could put our car at the top of a hill and we could let the brake go and we could see the car roll down the hill. Then we would see it displaying kinetic energy as it moved down the hill. We could also put a big spring behind it and we could project it forward like some toy cars move. And with that elas elastic potential energy, we could see kinetic energy as the car moved. We could also put a person in the car. We could make sure that the car has fuel in it. And then if the car was moving, we would say, yes, it has kinetic energy. But while it is still no, it has potential energy. What about the bat flying? We can see from the picture it is displaying kinetic energy because we can see that it's moving. What about this little boy? He is in the action of jumping over the fence. Is he displaying kinetic energy or not? Yes, he is because he is moving. What about these two little boys playing on the slide? The one that is climbing up, he's moving up the ladder. Yes, he has kinetic energy because he's moving. When he stands at the top of the slide, no, he has potential energy. When he slides down the slide, yes, he has kinetic energy. So what I want you to take from this little exercise is that energy is being transferred all the time. And we have to look at the specific context, the specific moment to see is there movement? Well, yes, kinetic energy is at play. If there's no movement, we're looking at potential energy. 
Now, what can you conclude about kinetic energy from these particular situations? So we have the first situation of a race, right? We have little cars having a race. The first thing I want to talk to you about is the faster an object moves, the more kinetic energy it has. So we've now got speed linked to the amount of kinetic energy. Previously, we spoke about height, for example, and mass influencing how much potential energy there might be in an object. Now, we're seeing that this little car, this little black car, has more kinetic energy than the pink car. Why? Well, clearly it won the race, so it was going faster. Which car had the least amount of kinetic energy? We would have to say the little purple car that is coming last because it's traveling the slowest. So we know that the faster an object moves, the more kinetic energy it has. We also know that the greater the mass of an object, the more kinetic energy it has. So in both of these systems, we're showing an increase in kinetic energy. In this case, due to speed or how fast something is going. And in this case, due to mass. So if we use this normal hammer, to nail in this nail into the wood, or we increase the mass of the hammer and we used a big mallet, we would increase the amount of kinetic energy to drive that nail into the wood. And what happens if I combined both of these variables? In other words, I increase the mass so I use a bigger hammer, but what if I bring that hammer down faster? Will I increase the kinetic energy even further? Yes, I would. And I think you can explore these situations very easily, practically. Go into a place where you can hammer something like your dad's garage or something and Get him to help you with a piece of wood and a nail and use a small hammer and then use a bigger hammer. Then use the bigger hammer, dropping it faster. And you will see that the effect would be that the nail would go in further into the wood and you would only maybe have to hit that nail twice instead of five times, for example. All right, let's move on and have a look at these new situations. Let's decide on where we see kinetic energy in relation to the water. Do we see the water as having kinetic energy as it is standing in the bucket? I hope that you're all shouting no, that water is still, it has no kinetic energy, it's not moving. There are two ways we could give that water kinetic energy. We could take our hand, believe it or not, that is your hand, and we could swirl it around in the bucket and the water would move. Then we have given it a limited amount of kinetic energy and that amount of kinetic energy will depend on the stored potential energy from our hand swirling it around. If we look at this situation and we tip the bucket over, we've now got two areas of water. We've got the pouring water and we've got the pool of water at the bottom of the, uh, the pour. All right? Where are we seeing kinetic energy? Well, we're seeing kinetic energy. I hope you are able to identify it in the pouring while that water is moving. The water will slow down as it pools and then it will come to a stop. So in the pool of water, no, we no longer see water having the kinetic energy. 
let's imagine that this bucket was standing on the floor. Does the bucket have kinetic energy? No, it's standing still. What happens if you came along and that's your foot, you kicked the bucket over, you would transfer potential energy potential energy to the bucket, you would give the bucket the energy, it would fall over displaying kinetic energy as it fell and of course that would then be transferred to the water to let us see that the water has kinetic energy just for those few seconds that it is moving and pouring out of the bucket. Are you seeing this idea that energy is, it's almost like it's fluid, it's almost like at one point in time it's stored and then it's suddenly moving and it's kinetic. So we mustn't think of energy in a box and think of it as well now it's potential and now it is kinetic. We must see that at any time something could happen to that little system and we will see a transfer of energy, maybe from outside the environment if we kick the bucket over or within the environment. And we can see that these energy transfers are happening all the time around us. Let's talk about where we see the kinetic energy in this situation, but in relation to the box. What kind of energy does the box have when it is on top of this table? Well, here it has gravitational potential energy. As it is falling, of course it is moving in space, it has kinetic energy. And once it has fallen and it is now no longer moving on the floor, once again it has no kinetic energy, but it has gravitational energy energy, again, potential energy. But what would be the difference between the box on top of the table in, let's say, position one and the box at the bottom of the table in position two? Where is there more gravitational potential energy? Well, it's up here in position one, of course. It's going to be very hard. You're going to have to apply a new form of potential energy. Maybe you're going to have to kick the box or push the box or pick the box up again in order to get it moving. How can our soccer player give the ball greater kinetic energy? So we know that the ball is still and the ball here is moving. So we know that in the second picture here we have got kinetic energy. How could we give that ball greater kinetic energy? Well, there are two things we could do. Are you thinking this through carefully? If it was this exact ball, he would need to kick it harder. So he would have to increase our potential energy in order to give the ball greater kinetic energy. Or we could change the ball. We could make the ball a much smaller ball. In other words, we could decrease the mass of the ball and in that way, we could also give it a greater boost. How can the skateboarder increase his kinetic energy? Well, he could maybe start from higher up and slide down the ramp or he could maybe make less friction with his wheels as they are sliding against the ramp surface. So is there a relationship then between potential energy and kinetic energy? Yes. Use this little block and the ramp to describe the relationship. And the relationship is very simple. An increase in potential energy is going to give an increase in kinetic energy. An increase in speed is going to 
increase our kinetic energy as well. An increase in mass is going to increase our kinetic energy. There are a lot of different things that are going to impact on the kinetic energy to change what we see happening in the system. That's all for today. I'll see you next time. Thank you.